Well, simply put, energy sufficiency is about reducing energy consumption through changes in behavior. Sufficiency comes from the Latin sufficere, which means enough. There are two meanings of enough that need to be considered. First, a social minimum level of energy and resource demand, and second, an environmental upper level. Today, laws, taxes, and infrastructures in our society mostly lead us to a behavior that implies environmental damages. For example, when the flight is less expensive than the train. This is why we need policies to make low carbon lifestyles more attractive and convenient, for example, incentivizing plant-based diets. Well, there are many benefits of a sufficiency policies. First of all, many sufficiency behaviors can reduce the energy demand almost immediately. For example, putting a pullover at home. Secondly, many sufficiency actions come with low costs for implementation, such as the speed limit. Thirdly, reducing demand helps to keep energy prices in check. When less energy is consumed, this helps to meet the restricted supplies, which, which reduces the prices. Fourth, it reduces also the cost of the energy transition in the medium and long term, as we need less renewable energy installations. Fifth, many sufficiency actions come with co-benefits, such as improved individual health through an active mobility, for example, or improved access for all citizens to energy services, such as mobility. The EU Commission could incentivize sufficiency in the short term, for example, by proposing energy saving targets, an energy savings campaign, and a temp temporary ban for advertisement for energy intensive consumption choices, such as flights and SUVs. For more insights on energy sufficiency and what the EU could do, check out our new paper and our project Fulfill.